Hi, this is Joe with Synergy's Accidentally Fit Podcast, where we're talking about real-world fitness, habits, tips, and tricks on becoming fit as a busy adult, juggling a lot in the life, and helping fitness become part of your life when it's not the most important part of your life. So it's not stories of people who are lifetime athletes who are looking to win the next gold medal, but these are 48 hour wheat work workers that have kids and a lot to juggle and a lot to handle. And today I'm joined by the lovely Beth Marsh. Beth, welcome to the show. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> I'm happy I've known, to be here. <laughs> I've known Beth for years, over up to four years now. Three. <laughs> Three years. It's, yeah. It feels like longer. Maybe it's just because, <laughs> no, just <laughs> Maybe it's from all the donut jokes. Yes. So I've been able to know Beth for three years and she's been an active member at her gym, Synergy Athletics, and she's brought her daughters in to help with community events like uh, the, the trunk or treat we did last year. And it's just been so good to get to know Beth. She's a very positive person who stuck with it over the course of three years. And in any fitness journey, you're going to have ups and downs over three years. So I thought she'd be perfect to come on here and share some. So perhaps some of those struggles that you're having, myself or Beth, have already been through. And it's funny, I'm the trainer, so people automatically uh, think that I have it easy. So that's why I need I need other people on the show too. Because yes, I have three kids and, and run a business, but since it's a gym business, people won't listen to me. So I need some more real people, Beth. I appreciate you being on. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm happy to be here. So let's start off with this. What were some frustrations that led you to seeking a way to become more fit? What are some things that were like, hey, with some triggers that happened where you're like, hey, you know what? I'm going to start getting in shape. Um, I, I had put on some weight and, uh, I realized that I needed to do something more than just, you know, like your, your dieting. And I thought, Oh, let me go try, try out a gym. And, uh, I did, I saw the, the synergy ad on Facebook one night and, you know, three years ago, <laughs> and, uh, I contacted, you know, you guys and that you had said, Oh, come on in for, you know, a you know, a free trial. So I did, and I loved it automatically and I couldn't be happier. Um, That's so cool. Now, did, did you try anything else? You mentioned diet and I do appreciate very much yeah. and know that you're a synergy member. Um, and I, I do want to say it's part of our, our system of when someone is trying out something new, you want to make it as easy as possible for them to try it out, whether it's a diet, whether it's a gym, that's why we always just do the free trial. Hey, come check it out. If it's for you, great. If it's not, that's cool too. So it takes a lot of energy to get up the momentum to say, hey, I'm going to get in shape. Yes. So finding something that doesn't have a lot of friction to get into is a smart way to get, to get rolling. Now, did you try other diets first? Um, I, you know, I just like your, your basic kind of things, you know, trying to cut out some carbs and, you know, things like that. But um, I noticed I really, I wanted to get fit again you know, because I, I haven't worked out since college. <laughs> that was a long time ago. So, um, so I, you know, I did, I came in and I started, you know, your program, I started, I think it was like two times a week, then I jumped up to three. And I've been an unlimited member for the past two years. So yes, <laughs> so you've been able to make it, you've survived the gauntlet for, for two <laughs> yeah. or three years now. And Tell us a story over those two or three years, because I know it's happened to you. I'm, I know it's happened to me and many times where you've temporarily lost a little bit of motivation where yes. things fall off, like you just feel down a little bit. And what did you do to get back into it? Um, during the quarantine, the mm -hmm. whole COVID thing, <laughs> <laughs> um, that was really difficult for me. And um, uh, being, being a single mom, being self-employed, I had all these things, you know, bombarding me and, um, I, I was, I, I did get really depressed, I, you know, I'll be honest with you. Um, and then, you know, when the gym closed, that was kind of like <laughs> one of the final things. And I was without a job for a little bit. And, um, but because of you and your staff, um, you guys kept everything so positive and kept us motivated by all of your daily posts and, um, you know, trainers reaching out to us members, you know, checking on us, seeing if we were okay, if we needed anything. Um, you had a lot of like the Facebook lives, the train heroics, um, and then you had the Zoom. And I, 
it was it was really difficult during the quarantine though. I I, I did struggle and and I I put on I put on seven pounds <laughs> during it. And um, so now I've since I've been back I've been trying to eat better. Been seeing a nutritional specialist and you know um, just coming in full you know unlimited again. So that's like really helped a lot. And, that's and then amazing. just having I, the. Oh, at first, I need to to yeah. appreciate your vulnerability and sharing that. I think we all went through. I know you had shared some things with me in private that it was tough. I appreciate you sharing that you had some depression. You were able to bounce back. I mean, you can look at this very sad mustache I'm growing. If you're watching this on YouTube, this isn't a a, a mustache of someone who's been had a very happy last eight months. Um, and just the way you're able to bounce back is, is impressive. And I think a little bit of the lesson is in there is find something that works. You reached out and were able to get nutrition yes. advice from someone separately uh, because that's an avenue you can work on when gyms are closed or when yes. you can't necessarily get in as much or where you saw maybe you're, are you, are you home more now, Beth? I am home more. Um, I, I do speech therapy. I work with toddlers and preschoolers and right now we're back. We can do in person, but you know, they don't totally recommend it. So I do one session in person and then I'm doing teletherapy, which was a whole new thing for me too. had to learn, <laughs> relearn all of that. And, um, you know, that was, that was tough to implement. It took, it took, it took hours, you know, learning it and trying it out and, and doing all that. So. So you're thrown in the deep end multiple times in the last oh, yeah. six months, still swimming yeah. though, still <laughs> swimming. Yeah. So how the heck do you stay out of the fridge and the cupboards when you're home working so much, Beth? Well, and that, that was my, my problem, um, you know, when during the quarantine and all that is um, I did have a hard time, you know, trying to stay out of the fridge <laughs> definitely, yeah. and reach for snacks because I had all these snacks for my daughters to have. And um, it was really easy to reach for you know, a handful of combos <laughs> instead of, you know, eating, you know, an apple or, you know, um, protein shake. So. Yeah. So did you just willpower I, your way through it or did you I have did. some, so you just I tough did. it I, out? You know, so, some days were a little bit more tough than others. And, you know, I, I, I did break and I, I did have, I did eat, you know, poorly. <laughs> well, of course. Um, oh, that is but, only human. Yeah. But, um, but since, since I've been back now to the gym and back on, I'm on more of like a routine, um, I've been able to eat properly and, um, you know, do all of that. So, and, and, and like I said, I mean, you guys, um, all the trainers and everything being so positive and motivating, um, you know, you guys really helped me pull through. And then the members, I've oh, made yeah. so many, so many friends <laughs> at the gym. And um, it, it's, it's just been wonderful, like being able to get out and, and hike. Um, mm -hmm. I've never hiked before in my life. I was never an outdoors person. I didn't like to get dirty or any of that kind of stuff. <laughs> and here, here I was hiking. I was doing obstacle course <laughs> workouts and, and, you know, rocking now too. And it's just, and, and running. And I mean, it's just been um, a lot of positive new opportunities that, I probably would never have had, um, you know, if I, if I wasn't involved in Synergy. And I, I love following yours and Jennifer's and a bunch of other people's Arlene's. I, I don't want to miss yes. anyone, but all, all their side adventures. And I, I love doing that too. I use, I think there's a lesson here using fitness so you can enjoy other things in life, whether yeah. it's hiking, which is, which is one of my things too, rucking, which I've enjoyed a little. You're actually probably a better <laughs> rucker than me right now, <laughs> Beth. Um, <laughs> Uh, running around playing flag football with my kids that there is again fitness you're not doing fitness for fitness's goal it's the right. or fitness's sake it's the the feelings and the accomplishments that you get because of your dedication to your health and fitness um, how have you felt during let's say the obstacle course or during rucking like like what does that feel like Beth um, it's, it's felt amazing and I can do it, <laughs> you know, and that was one of the things when I've been at the obstacle course, um, noob sanity before, uh, you know, um, Jarrett has said to me, I can tell who goes to synergy, <laughs> you know, and he's like, yeah. 
So, I mean, that made, that made me feel good. Um, but then also like now I have goals <laughs> of oh, like yeah. different, different obstacles I want to accomplish and get through. And so, you know, I've been working with Kyle with some of that stuff and I've told him, you know, what I'm trying to do. And so he, he has me doing pull-ups now. I mean, I never could do that before. Um, and then a lot of lifting too. That, that was one thing I really enjoyed prior to the quarantine. And then I lost, I lost it, <laughs> you know, not, not keeping up with it. You know, I didn't have like heavy weights and all that kind of stuff at my house. But, um, once I got back, you know, he started me slowly easing into it and, um, I've been able to, uh, I'm really successful with that and excited. <laughs> Four <laughs> years he, ago, did you think you'd ever be squatting on it with a barbell and doing obstacle courses, no, Beth? <laughs> not at all. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> but it's pretty cool. No, the doors exciting. that open up all the, all the exciting thing. And I think it goes back to a lesson we were talking about with the nutritional habits and what you mentioned with the routine. It's something yes. in the business we call foundational habits that when one thing starts to fall in place, then the other things become easier too. So as you were able to get back into a fitness routine, nutrition was able to get easier. You were able to look to other external opportunities to get fit yes. versus just trying to start with something that might not be the best fit for you initially. And what I mean is everyone's foundational habits are going to be a little bit different. Mine is working out. I know I'm going to work out four times a week. If I don't, I'm grumpy. Somebody mm -hmm. else, it might be eating a veggie with every meal. Someone else might be walking every morning. We have a member, Debbie, who's out hustling uh, four or five miles every, every day. That's her foundational habit. So for the listeners, I think there's a little bit of lesson when you think you're, you're in a bunch of chaos, you, you fall back to the one thing that kind of brought you to the table and then you start rebuilding from there. And I think Beth did an excellent job of that from hearing Thank her story you. today. Thank you. And I do. I look forward to going to the gym daily. I go Monday through Saturday and every day I, I do, I really look forward to it. And yeah, again, it, it puts all the other habits together. I was talking with a member the other day. He was telling me about a hot tub. He's like, do you think a hot tub's a great idea and go up there and relax in it for like an hour, two hours a night? I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah, that's a great idea because usually you're sitting in the kitchen for an hour or two hours a night eating a bunch of crap. Yes. So what you need to know, like nighttime's going to come around. We talk about habit loops with members. Nighttime comes around, you find something else you enjoy to get you away from the habit that isn't serving your goals, but you still enjoy like eating bad food. Uh, you're doing a great yeah. job with like rucking or obstacle courses or hiking and finding these other ways to spend time and get satisfaction versus uh, the food, oh, yeah. food satisfaction. Yeah. Definitely. And, and all the members, everybody, um, at the uh, they're all right. Especially yeah. Arlene. Let's, <laughs> yeah. let's hope she, I know she'll listen. Arlene's yeah. a listener, <laughs> <laughs> but they, they've all been wonderful and everyone is so supportive of one another. And like I said, um, have made a lot of great friendships over these past few years. And yeah. Yes. I, I, and I can see it at the events and when members come in and we yeah. used to bust chops back pre COVID <laughs> when we were able to do things, I know. anything that we, <laughs> your workouts were an hour while well, you were in the building for an hour, 15, your workout was about 30 minutes and you're signing autographs, to all the other member buddies for the other <laughs> 45 minutes. So, and, and that is truly a part of fitness. And again, we're, we're doing fitness, not just for fitness's sake, but for enjoyment and fulfillment in your life. And I think you, yes. you feel that, that that Social goal piece. so well so well <laughs> yeah. and yeah it might be other people at the gym it might be people you hike with it might be people you rock with it might be friends and family outside of the gym it might be all of the above but having the support system is really cool uh, let's let's switch it back to nutrition beth what do you eat, eat like on a regular basis now um i've been you know eating more um protein i've increased my protein in intake and i've decreased carbs and sweets which is hard because i i love my sweets as you know <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> i love my donuts <laughs> uh -huh, yeah. um, and one of the things that um i did a lot over the summer i'll admit to it <laughs> i um had a frozen coffee almost every single day and until I put it into my little fitness app, <laughs> I didn't realize how many calories. There's 360 calories in a small. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, I was like basically having one almost every day. And that was just to get me through the day. Cause like I said, I was, I was depressed. 
Um, and, but now, you know, I found other ways, like I'm, I'm having more protein shakes. I'm using, um, stevia, <laughs> you know, um, and been mixing it with my coffee or making protein shake, you know, coffees. And, um, I found some energy drinks, you know, that I like too. So that's what I'm, I've been doing. Yeah. And I, I think an important piece of that for anyone listening, if you want a reality check, actually yeah. track your calories for a day or a week and, you know, yeah. get, through the, through the weekend weekend is part of the week and actually put your calories in. There's been studies on it where people uh, log about 30% less calories than they eat in the calorie um, nutrition facts or just a rough estimate. But if you want something to scare you straight, give it, yourself an os- honest assessment and add up those calories. That happened to you, Beth? It, it scared. It scared me. <laughs> I was like, wow, I didn't realize how many calories I was, I was eating a day. Um, so now that I've been keeping track of it, I know what I need to do. Um, you know, throwing in more vegetables, um, and, uh, cooking, cooking more than eating out less because that was another easy thing to do was, uh, getting takeout, Uh you know, and, and then, um, you know, and then because I, I was out of a job, um, for a little bit. Uh, I had some, you know, great friends and family that were bringing us meals, <laughs> but they weren't always the healthiest, so <laughs> you know, um, but now, like I said, I, I'm back on track. I'm cooking more um, and my girls actually are enjoying it. So, and th- that's, been, that's been a huge plus because that that's hard because then they can get picky and they're like, oh, I'm not going to eat that, you know? <laughs> Um, but they, they've been really great about trying everything. So I love that you mentioned that, uh, I'm doing a separate episode, just me, me flapping my gums about um, a lot of people think fitness and like their daily life are on opposite ends of a spectrum, but you can integrate them both for long-term success. If you work with your family and your day to day, and yes, you should get some time for you and it might be some separate workouts or whatever, but if you can integrate them in the process and you don't feel like it's a selfish experience, like, Hey, I'm going to go away now. I'm going to go do my exercise. and I come back, exercise is over. If you make it part of a lifestyle, you're going to set yourself up for long, long long-term success, even though you have these up and downs that Beth and I are talking about. And, and you're absolutely right about that because um, one time um, my oldest, she made a comment about, oh, you're on a diet. And I'm like, no, I'm not on a diet. I said, I'm just eating healthier. And I said, that's what we have to do. We have to eat healthier. I said, this isn't a diet. I said, this is long term. <laughs> yeah. I, and wow, I, I love that. I, I've never been a big fan of the word diet. Maybe it's just negative right. connotation growing up where watching my family members, my mom struggling with it. And that was back with that, the, the healthy craze was like healthy choice, frozen, yes. whatever crap from the freezer. And <laughs> like, it really looked unappetizing. She said, well, I'm on a diet. And like we associated diet with eating just bricks of foot, frozen food. So yeah, it, it is a little bit of psychological where you're just like, no, this is just how I eat. Like I want to eat to feel good. I want to sleep better. I want energy to do all these fun things. I just can't eat like a, um, you know, a dumpster behind the cider mill, just eating all the leftover donuts. <laughs> Got to eat like an adult sometimes. Absolutely. Um, I, I love that, that, that re rephrasing of how you eat. So now let's not talk an imperfect experience because we both occasionally enjoy you, you daily donut or whatever it is, uh, <laughs> what they call a cheat meal in the business. How do you, how do you mitigate that to enjoy some of the foods you like without letting it take over your full eating plan? Um, what I do is I will have one helping or <laughs> one donut instead of three donuts. <laughs> so, so that that's one thing that I have found um, that I can still eat, you know, a, some sweets or some carbs here and there because I think it's unhealthy to cut it all completely out. Mm-hmm. So, um, th- that's what I've done. I've just, um, you know, reportioned everything. So I think, I think portion sizing is, is huge when it comes to, um, you know, eating healthy and eating unhealthy and, and eating portions. Unhealthy. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's where like people watch their portions on their healthy meals and they just go nuts on their bad meals. Like you said, three donuts right. as opposed well, to one, like if it's been a week or two and you haven't had a donut, maybe you forget what it tastes like, but you know what that second <laughs> one tastes like the exact same as the first one. You just ate exactly. it. You know what that third one tastes like exact same as the second one. So you're already there. You know what it tastes like. Right. Right. <laughs> 
So that's a good way to, to rephrase it. And yes, uh, eating like that's going, I, I like to redo around social um, gatherings. Family brings over food. Yeah, I'm going to enjoy it. Yes. Um, go out on, with some friends. Yeah, for sure. But I'm just not going to sit on my couch and eat a bucket of ice cream. Like that's where I no. draw the line. Exactly. That, that, you know, people think cheat meal. I'm going to say no to all this food, which means I can't hang out with friends. No, you can. You just can't sit and eat a, a, a thing of Hershey Kisses by yourself at your desk all day. <laughs> right. Well, and I noticed too, one of the other things I do um, when I do go out to dinner, you know, I mean, it's, it's a rarity now, but um, you know, if I get a burger, I cut it in half and I only eat half the burger <laughs> and I'll take the other half home. And usually one of my daughters eats it. <laughs> well, there so, you go. That helps. Good portion yeah, control. It usually help. it's the other way around. My kids don't eat all their food. And I'm like, you know what? I don't want that food to go to waste. And I eat it. So yeah. good, <laughs> well, let me ask you this. Cause you've had quite the diverse fitness experience in the last three years from all the activities yes. you've shared. What is one time you've been out of your comfort zone and how'd you work through it? Cause you've regularly put yourself out of the comfort zone from lifting weights to, to rocking, to training, to going to a gym for the first time to obstacle courses. What's one of those situations and how'd you get through it, Beth? Um, gosh, there's, there's been a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Frequently on your coaster. Um, once you get out of it once, it gets a little easier though, but yeah, yeah go ahead. Yes. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Um, Pro, you know, I think, um, well, well, I, I told you, um, I actually, I'll, I'll share this with you. Uh, on Sunday, um, I, I went running for the first time in, <laughs> in almost two months. And I, I really enjoyed running over the summer and had, you know, a couple of different friends that I was running with. And, uh, I, I had gone on a trail run <laughs> and, um, I ended up falling and I, I cut my forehead and it was, it was pretty bad. <laughs> so, um, I, I kind of, I don't know, I was like really nervous about it and I, I really didn't want to put those sneakers on again and try it again. Mm -hmm. But, um, what had happened was because I did so much running over the summer, over the, um, you know, the few months, um, our neighborhood was having like a, a monthly challenge and they were encouraging everyone to just get out there and walk or run or do whatever. And so um, a friend, one of my neighbors that contacted me and she's like, oh, you have a mug, um, you know, at my house, come up and get it. And it was, you know, it was like a 100K, congratulations, kind of a mug, you know, for doing it. And I'm like, all right, <laughs> I think this is a sign. I got to get out there and try it again. <laughs> and, and I did. And it felt amazing. It felt so good to run in. Um, like I said, I haven't done it in um, probably two months. So that was, that was pretty, pretty fun. And it um, is probably going to stay away from the trail running for a little bit. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I get that. And you know, that is, it seems like a simple story, but it is a powerful one because you, you went out and did something, you had a negative experience. Mm -hmm. It was something that was tough to do in the first place. And yet, after some time, you went out and did it again because you were able to find the enjoyment in it. And that's very difficult for people who have a negative experience. They just say, you know what, F this, I'm never trying again. <laughs> you know, whether it's the gym, whether it's, uh, mm -hmm. you know, any of these things that we're talking about today, 5K. I ran a 5K in 2004. I've never run a 5K. It was a challenge with my cooperating teacher because I was in the uh, Master's of Education program at Colgate and he wanted to challenge us. I was a football player. I'm like, yeah, I'll go run a 5K. It was called the Chili Chili 5K in January in Casanova. Okay. And I just went out. I'm like, I could, I'm just going to run as fast as I can. I ran like a mile and a half, threw up and walked the rest. Oh. And oh. <laughs> I mean, I had not run a 5K. I was just, you know, seven second football player, a little bit of energy. Yeah. Run another 5K until our, I think the pump and run that we ran as a gym almost oh 12 years later after that experience. Wow. It's really tough to get back on, on that horse. And mine was self-inflicted. Yours was an accident, and you're still able to go back and bounce back faster than I am. So a lot of credit to you on that one, Beth. Thank you. Thank you. So I have two more questions for you. Sure. The next one, if there's another adult, busy mom listening to this and struggling to get anything started fitness-wise, um, nutrition-wise, what are some words of wisdom that you can share to say, you know, it's, it's okay to go get started, it's okay to fail, it's okay to keep going? Um, what are some words of wisdom from you, Beth? Um, 
I realized it's okay not to be okay. <laughs> um, that's, that's like a big, a big one. Um, and I just encourage you to just get out and try something, whether it's going for a walk around the block, um, even like a little jog or a run, um, trying out, trying out a gym, um, especially like synergy, because, uh, I don't, I think there's just something special about, um, having a personal trainer, um, guide you, um, through your workout and like, just be there for you, you know, to say, Hey, you know what, why don't you try it this way? Or Hey, you're doing a really great job. Um, I think that that makes such a huge difference. Um, you know, like I said, Synergy, I, I tell everybody, Synergy is not your typical gym. <laughs> it's, it, it's so different. And um, I'd encourage anybody to just try it out. Um, but yeah, I would definitely, if you can get out for a walk or a hike, anything, you know, just try it at least once and see how it goes and, you know, go from there. Yeah, build build up small, and like you said, it's it's okay to not be okay, and it's okay to go through these struggles. You you went, been through them, going through them. We'll continue to go through them. You know, we've been through them. We got our kids here for homeschool yes. and going through them. You know, we'll be fine, but we'll go through more. And having that realization that it's okay, like this stuff is is kind of you know part of life. It is mm -hmm. you know, and and you've been very fortunate in your bubbly personality to make some buddies and, and get everyone and help them through it too. And I know they all appreciate your friendship, Beth, and I appreciate your time oh, coming yeah. on today and your vulnerability to share some of the stories on this Synergies Accidentally Fit podcast where there could be tens of people that listen to it. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Hopefully more than 10, maybe tens, plural, maybe 20. But here's my last question for you, Beth. You've been up and down in the fitness world now for three years, taking care of yourself and you've done extremely well. Are there any other questions that you have about fitness, eating, nutrition, lifestyle, or fitness lifestyle that I can help you with today? Um, not, not at the moment. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm in a really positive, good place right now. Um, I, I'm, I'm happy with way, every, how everything is going and my fingers <laughs> are crossed. <laughs> every time I hear Cuomo come back on <laughs> and speak or make a comment, I'm like, please, if anything, just don't close the gym again. <laughs> that's like, like that's my, my one thing I'm always checking. Um, but, but yeah, um, I, I feel, I feel really, really good right now. Well, that, and I feel like awesome. I'm on the right track and I appreciate all of like your challenges, that 100 day challenge that you guys ha have been doing. Um, and I appreciate like, I mean, Holly's one that she's always, she comments to everybody, you know, how oh, you're doing such a great job. And I mean, just like that, that little thing, <laughs> that just that little comment or like a like or something. I mean, it's, it's huge and it's motivating and, it, you know, it does definitely keep you going. Um, so and I think yeah. you're, you're highlighting the value of a community, whether it's our community, a synergy or whatever community someone gets into that's listening. It's genuinely a place where there is no extra compensation for staff for doing those sort of things. It's just naturally what they want to do because they legitimately care. And when things are closed, they can't see the members. Everyone was really struggling mentally because they want to see the people they care about. And I think that's, speaks to the strength of, of members like you, Beth, who have made us so passionate and, and get us to live our, our passion, our job. So I really appreciate that. And I really appreciate you coming on today. I don't think I've met many people at the gym over 12 years of doing this that have been outside their comfort zone as much as you <laughs> coming, you. coming in and being an open, uh, open slice. And, right, well, you know, and this is a good lesson. Just, Hey, what, you know, what can we do? barbell training regular training yes. cardio training busting chops running yes. 5ks doing rocks <laughs> doing obstacle courses like it should be a part of a fun journey and once you get the get over that initial negativity like i had with the word diet mm -hmm. and like some people have with the word gym or have with the word workout yeah. that there there can be some fun on the other side and there's gonna be a lot of growth on the other side too absolutely and it's for any age it, it, that that's the other piece that I've um, come to realize. It doesn't matter how you, you know how young, how old you are, you can you can participate in any of this. I mean, in all of the events that we were just talking about, um, there are people for all ages. So it's really really neat to see you know 
to see all of that. One time I was hiking up in the White Mountains and we were on our way up to do this eight or nine mile hike in one day and we'd see some some fit people coming down and you kind of BS on the trail a little bit and they'd ask <laughs> what we're doing. We'd tell them like, oh, you guys are crazy. I can't believe you're going that far or whatever. These are some fairly fit, younger people. We get through like two or three mountains and we walk by this group of, this pair of 60 year old women up <laughs> there just kind of shuffling along in between mountains and I'm you know, I had to ask him, I'm like, you know, how's, how'd you get into this? She's like, well, we just started when I was 60 and Aww. it doesn't matter how slowly we go. I know I'm going to get there. And she just went shuffling off over this mountain. And these are, you know, we had 30 year olds tell us it was impossible. And we meet 60 year olds who just started it up there and it has to do with their, mm -hmm. their mindset and their approach and their enjoyment to, mm -hmm. to finding something they like with fitness. The mindset is huge when it comes to fitness. Well, Beth, I really appreciate it. I don't want to get that could be a whole nother podcast. So I'm going to sit, just sit, <laughs> sit tight for a second. I'll do the little sign off and then I'll stop the recording. So I want to thank all the listeners for listening to the Synergy Accidentally Fit podcast. If you have enjoyed it, please take time to review it on your favorite podcast platform so we can keep growing it and shooting more episodes. It is brought to you by Synergy Athletics, where you can learn more about us at synergyfitnessteam.com.